Fox Sports. We are Black Fox. We are Wisconsin. And we welcome you from downtown Denver, Colorado on a Sunday afternoon at Coors Field. We are ready for the Brew Crew and the Colorado Rockies today. And it's just not any Sunday. It is Father's Day. And many here making great memories, hanging out with Dad. There's something extra special about Father's Day at the old ballpark. And we're glad you've decided to join us here this afternoon. And hi, everybody. We welcome you from Coors Field. Brian Anderson with Bill Schroeder. Happy Father's Day, partner. You too, bud. All right. We're looking forward to this day. You know, this is a special day because it's fathers, it's sons, it's fathers and daughters. And it's always fun hanging out with your family at the ballpark, but especially your dad. Yeah, can't be together, but uh, he's out there in West Piston, Pennsylvania. Happy Father's Day, Pop. I mean, he taught me everything I knew about baseball as a young man. I remember seven years old. He was teaching me the fundamentals that held true all the way through the major league, not just sports, but in life as well. So thank you very much, Dad. Love you. Yeah, and happy Father's Day to my dad as well. Paco Dave down in Austin, Texas. All right, we got a baseball game today, and Craig Council, he's a father, and he wants some discipline out there on the field, and the Brewers have improved their defense. Something that correct counsel made as a point when he took over as manager. Yeah, they have been pretty shaky throughout the season defensively, but the last six games they have not committed an error. They've been pretty tight defensively. Matter of fact, last eight road games, the Brewers have gone without committing a miscue. So you can see some of these video highlights. Outfield, infield, Jonathan Lucoy making throws. They're, they're giving, not giving extra outs like they were early in this season. Still having a rough time winning games, but the defense has improved. Well, the Brewers are trying to salvage this last game, make it a series win here against the Colorado Rockies. We'll take a break. When we come back, Craig and Augie from the Dells, they'll be talking Matt Garza. It's his turn on the mound this afternoon in Denver.
A hot, sunny Sunday afternoon in Denver, Colorado, and they are packing them in here at Coors Field. Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin this afternoon, presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Book your stay now. 85 degrees, temperatures expected into the 90s before this game concludes. It is the final game of a brief five-game road trip for Milwaukee. Brewers uh, lost two in Kansas City. They won the opener here on Friday night, then lost last night. So a chance to win this series with a victory here today. Craig Council, the former Colorado Rocky, that's who drafted him, came up through their minor league system and played in just uh, four games with the Rockies. Parts of two years, that 97 season, that was the year he was traded from Colorado to the Florida Marlins. And, of course, history was made there as Craig Council scored the winning run in the World Series in 1997 for the Marlins. Council's Potawatomi batting order today looks like this. Gene Segura back in the leadoff spot. Still no Carlos Gomez. Gerardo Parra, then Ryan Braun. Middle of the order is Lucroy, Ramirez, and Lind. Bottom of the order, Hernan Perez, Shane Peterson, and Matt Garza rounding it out. And that's the batting order rock that will face left-hander Chris Russon. Yeah, Chris Russon, a left-hander. Parts of three seasons with the Cubs. This is his first season with the Rockies. This is only his second home start of the year. He's lost two in a row. Both of those losses came on the road. 13 earned runs he's allowed in nine and a third innings. So he's been scuffing a little bit. You can see his numbers overall. A 2-2 two two record and a 5-14 earned run average. Well, let's check out your Menards. Rockies defense. You've got one uh, change. you got Yanoa in left field. Rafael Yanoa. you got Yanoa, Blackman, and Gonzalez in the outfield. Arenado Tulowitzki back in the lineup. Tulowitzki had yesterday off. LeMay, Hugh, and Paulson at second and first. And Nick Hundley, who started game one of this series, back behind home plate today. And our four-man umpiring crew this afternoon. Crew chief is Bill Miller. He's out at second base. Jim Wolf will call the balls and strikes. We got Adrian Johnson and Doug Eddings joining him on the base paths. Well, if you're just picking us up, let's uh, give you an update on this series. Back on Friday night, Brewers got started with a bang. Ryan Braun with a two-run home run in the first inning. And then Ramirez came up in the first inning. He homered to the opposite field. It was a three spot in the first. Jane Peterson had three hits on Friday. He continues to play stellar baseball and the Brewers won that game. And then yesterday it was Charlie Blackman with the decisive blow. It was a two run homer. Kyle Loesch giving up three runs in six innings and the Colorado Rockies winning yesterday's game by a final of five to one. So that sets us up for the rubber game in this series. And Gene Segura leads off. First pitch is up and away, and away we go. Today's game being produced by Brent Reland, the son of Dwayne, directed by Renardo Lowe, the son of Robert. Great to have you with us, and happy Father's Day, partner. Yeah, to you as well. Nice day here in Colorado. Understand it's nice back in Milwaukee. It's going to be nice to get home. Running graphics today, Brian Mikalogic, his dad Jim. And handling the tape is Tim and his dad Tom. We uh, wish them all the best, and we're glad we could be with you on a Father's Day today. they got a good crowd here today still filing in. It is supposed to be a very hot afternoon here in Denver, Colorado. It might have uh, scared a few fans away as Segura cuts and misses. Yeah, it's supposed to be in the mid 90s. It's been uh, the weather has been perfect here in Denver, at least to watch baseball. It's been a bit hot on the field, but the guys aren't complaining too much. Been waiting for nice hot weather. First uh, two plus months of the season. Russin delivers and a little bouncer in front of the plate. Going to be a tough play. Hundley throws to first and hits Segura. Got to get back. Yeah, he did make a turn. They say he's safe. Wow. That was close. Segura did look like he made a turn and the home plate umpire Jim Wolf has now overruled the call at first. He has called him out. Yeah, and that's the right call. And Craig Council is going to argue 
It looked like uh, Segura either was making an effort or making a move to second base. Well, either that, I think what Craig Council's argue is that the Segura just looking to see where the ball was. And Craig Council arguing with Jim Wolf. Council has not been ejected from a game as a manager. This could be the first one because the point he's making, I think, is that this is the first base umpire. Right. It's his call. Well, I think what the call is is that he was not in the running lane. We had that situation in the first game of the series. If we can see the replay, if he's not in the running lane and he is in contact with either the fielder or the baseball, he's going to be out automatically. Uh, you know what? That's exactly right. So it's not the fact that he turned towards second. It's the fact that the ball hit him from the catcher and he was in the running lane. And both feet have to be in the running lane in order for that to be uh, incidental contact. It'll be two to three on the put out. Let's see where Segura is. Very difficult for a right-handed batter to run in that running lane, and he is clearly out of it, and that's the call. See where his feet are. Neither foot is in that running lane. He gets hit, and that's why they call the out. Yeah, we had almost the exact play yesterday. It wasn't on a throw from the catcher. It was a ground ball down that first baseline. Yesterday, remember, Jim Wolf was the first base umpire yesterday. So the first out comes with a little excitement. Here's Para now, and he bounces to Tulowitzki and two quick outs. Let's take another look at Segura's path to first base. Yeah, just by nature of where that right-handed batter's box is, the direct line to first base is going to be outside that running lane. And you know, very rarely, if ever, do you see a right-handed batter run in that lane, particularly with both feet. That's about the only time you're going to see that call. We saw that, what was it, Friday, right, when uh, a batter for the Rockies ran into Jason Rogers in an attempt to catch the baseball or a ground ball. All right, so two outs now. Here is Ryan Braun. Braun homered here. We showed you that two-run homer he had on Friday night. That was his 14th home run of the season. And Ryan in the top 10 in the league in that category, tied for seventh as he grounds to Tulowitzki. And there is the final out of the first. Had some early fireworks here with Craig Council and company. Now Matt Garza's turn on the mound. And here we go to the bottom of the first. The Brewers go in order in the top of the first. There is Walt Weiss. This is year three for him with the Colorado Rockies. And the Rockies come in with a record of 29 and 39. They are in last in their division as well. The Potawatomi batting order for Walt Weiss with Charlie Blackman, DJ LeMayhew, and Troy Tulowitzki at the top. Carlos Gonzalez, Nolan Arenado, Ben Paulson in the middle, and Nick Hundley, Rafael Enoa. And Chris Russin 
rounding out Walt Weiss's starting nine. That will face Matt Garza. And yeah, making start number seven against Colorado. He's two and four. He has never beat the Rockies here at Coors Field. Looking for a win here today. Last time out, a loss against the Royals. He got roughed up. A career high 13 hits and six and two thirds innings and give up six runs overall. An earned run average just a touch over five and a four and eight record. First time on the mound here at Coors Field since 2011, back when Garza was a Cub. And his first pitch to Charlie Blackman is in there for strike one. Blackman had a home run yesterday, hit a two run shot, had two hits yesterday, and drove in three runs. A two run homer was the one that hurt the most for Kyle Loesch, who actually pitched pretty well yesterday and was pleased about. How he commanded in yesterday's game. He only gave up four hits, which is he could have had the one pitch back on that home run to Blackman. They walked two batters. Unfortunately, both of those walks scored. One of them right in front of that home run by by Charlie Blackman on a changeup. But Loesch uh, very good in yesterday's game. Particularly good when you consider where he was pitching. An off-speed guy pitching here in Coors Field. Brewers got a win out of Taylor Youngman on Friday. And then Loesch took the loss yesterday in that 5-1 Rockies win. There's a good curveball in there for strike three, a swing and a miss. Good way to start the day for Matt Garza. Now Garza with uh, uh, three strikeouts in his last time out against Kansas City at Miller Park. Starts out pretty well. That's a big looping curveball, able to get Blackman out in front. And Matt Garza, proud father of four, and uh, he told me earlier today his uh, kids are on the way. They're going to land an hour after the Brewers land in Milwaukee if all, thing, all things go normal. So he is looking forward to seeing his kids when the Brewers return to Milwaukee after the game today. Get a day off for the Brewers. It's been a while since the crew has had an off day. End of a long stretch of games for him. Yeah, 17 consecutive days without an off day. The Brewers will get one tomorrow. DJ LeMayhew back in the two spot in this Walt Weiss batting order. He is among league leaders in batting average. Starting play today. LeMayhew checks in fifth in the league in hitting. He is seventh in the league in hits. Has 78 hits coming in. And also plays a gold glove second base. This guy does it on both sides of the ball. He is a terrific talent. Yeah, he and uh, Arenado, outstanding defenders for this Rockies ball club. They would get his hits. Not a guy that's going to hit a ton of home runs, but shoots the ball all over the diamond. Tough guy to strike out. Two and two to LeMayhew. And a swing and a foul back in and out of the middle of Lucroy. Garza going with the off speed once again. Matt is a guy that can have a dominant performance any time he takes the ball. And you're always kind of expecting that. He does have great stuff. So it's been a bit of an enigma this year. He Suffered one of the worst starts of his career at any level. He gave up 10 earned runs against the Mets. But other than that outing, which is an ERA buster, he has uh, managed to keep his ball club in the games. And even the six runs he gave up against the Royals his last time out, Kansas City won that game 8-4. to four. The Brewers still felt like they were in striking distance. You know, numbers-wise, it's been a pretty good month of June, including that last start. Where he gave up six runs. Two earned runs combined as two starts before that. Here is Segura. We'll take care of LeMayhew for out number two. Well, let's check out the Brewers Menards defense. Shane Peterson gets yet another start. Carlos Gomez still on the sidelines, although Gomez coming along nicely. Don't be surprised to see him in the lineup on Tuesday against the Mets. 
Parr and Braun wound up the rest of the outfield. Ramirez, Segura, Perez, and Adam Lind. Adam Lind getting a start against a left-handed pitcher here today, and Luke Roy behind home plate. Shane Peterson, his 13th start for the Brewers, his 12th in left field. He has been a mainstay in the absence of Carlos Gomez, and he's been playing very well. Peterson had a three-hit game here on Friday night. And has a, a full highlight reel full of great plays, great defensive plays, throws, and catches. Troy Tulowitzki takes one inside. Colorado Slugger was out of the lineup yesterday, had a day off, and uh, did not make an appearance in yesterday's game, not even as a pinch hitter. Had a hit in the opener on Friday night, was one for four. He's always given the Brewers threat uh, fits. He's always been a good hitter, but particularly good against the Brew Crew. Not hitting the home runs that he used to. It doesn't have the range that he used to, but who does, right? Getting up there and age all of a sudden, uh, you know, battling injuries. So you see his numbers against Milwaukee. Outstanding work. Garza's got him in a hole, one and two. And he might have chased one. Fouls it away. Yeah, success really comes down to that slider from Matt Garza. He threw one there to Tulowitzki, left it up in the strike zone. But uh, not just a slider. He's been establishing the inside corner with his fastball a lot more in his last few starts. And he's had a little bit more success. The 30-year-old Tulowitzki. Boy, hard to believe. He's been around since 06. And a swing and a miss. Down he goes. Heck of a start for Matt Garza. He's got his breaking stuff working early. A couple of strikeouts in the first inning. Today's game, we are participating in the home run challenge. Today, every Brewer's home run in this game raises $12,500 for prostate cancer research. You can make a pledge by going online to homerunchallenge.org. Over $2 million has already been raised for prostate cancer research. We've got the uh, light blue sweatbands and the pins on today. You see some of the players... Some of the umpires wearing the uh, light blue sweatbands. Hope Dad stay in the game. Of course, us too, right? Get your uh, screenings yearly. Stay on top of it. Here's Jonathan Lucroy to lead off for Milwaukee. Three up, three down inning for Chris Russon in the first inning. All three were ground outs. Lucroy 
with a 231 average. He has one homer. He hit that home run at Target Field in Minneapolis. Has 11 runs batted in. Now the Brewers have seen Russin before. This is his fourth start against Milwaukee. He is 0-2. Last time he faced Milwaukee was 2013. As a member of the Cubs, not a hard thrower, a crafty lefty, if you will. Throws four different pitches, and according to Darnell Coles, Brewer hitters need to make him get the bit pitch up in the strike zone early in the count. Well, in stature and in stuff, he reminds you of Jamie Moyer, maybe a younger Jamie Moyer on the mound. He's trying to stay below hitting speed. He's a Michigan native, 28 years of age. He'll turn 29 in October as Luke Roy bounces one foul. Russin came up when Jordan Lyles was injured. Lyles in there starting rotation. He tore ligaments in his big toe. And Russin is here and. Don't know how long he'll be in the rotation. The Rockies have a very good young prospect. With their top pitching prospect John Gray. Who uh, many fans are calling on to make his appearance. At Coors Field this year also. Eddie Butler. Is another starter that has been. Talked about so. You don't know be so dramatic to say Russin is uh, pitching today for his spot in the rotation but. He certainly uh, probably feels the wolf at the door at this point. Mm -hmm. Started out pretty well, won a couple of games. He's lost his last two. And Luke Croy sends one just foul, just missed the bag at third. And looking at the uh, Rockies media guide, Russin threw a no hitter in Triple A last year. Souvenir on Father's Day. Take that ball home. Lucroy into left field. Back is Enoa, and he's got it for the out. Lucroy hit it sharply. Too much on the line, though, and Enoa able to make the play for out number one. Our T Mobile game changer this afternoon is uh, Ramos Ramirez. His last four games at Coors Field in Denver. How about 11 hits and 18 at bats three of those 11 hits are home runs and seven runs batted in and he homered here in the first inning on Friday night. That was his first opposite field home run of the season. And one of those that he got underneath and that just kept going further and further. It was a Coors field home run. But they still count. There was a waiting for him to get on a stretch of about two weeks where he's swinging the bat well. He showed signs. He showed signs off and on this year so far, but has not been able to put together that consistency. I thought it was interesting after his game on Friday night. Ramirez had the day off yesterday. He had three hits on Friday, including that home run. But he and Craig Council had worked out prior to this series that. Aramis would get the day off Saturday, play Sunday afternoon, and then the Brewers have a scheduled team day off tomorrow. So essentially every other day for a stretch here for Aramis Ramirez. Yeah, and that's the way that the Brewers feel is they're going to keep him in the lineup. Uh, you know, throughout the season, he can't play every single day, so he'll get his required days off. Day games after night games typically is when he does get days off. Does have a homer against Russin. Including three hits he has. The most hits hardly any of the Brewers have seen much of Russin. Jonathan Lucroy had five at bats coming in as well. He's uh, spent most of his time the last few years in Triple A. Just tries to work those corners, get you to chase. 
talking to Darnell Coles before the game around a batting cage. You know, the idea, two things very important get it up in the strike zone and don't try and pull it. He's going to try and get you out of the way. And Ramirez got jammed a little bit, pops this one up behind second base. That is LeMahieu. And Aramis is out number two. That's probably one he wishes he could have back. So two outs for Adam Lind. And he got into the power act yesterday, an opposite field home run. It was Powerball home run number 10 for Adam Lind. And a changeup takes it the other way. One of those high, majestic jobs. And maybe another course field home run. That was off of Bettis yesterday, who really threw the ball well. Chad Bettis yesterday's Rocky starter. That was a sixth inning home run for Lind. It was the only inning the Brewers were able to score yesterday against Bettis, the starter, who went six and a third. Tommy Kane Lee and John Axford, who finished the game. Lind in a hole, no balls, two strikes. And did he go? He did not. Able to check his swing, according to the third base umpire, Doug Eddings. Yeah, Brewers have three left handed hitters in their lineup. That's unusual with left hander on the mound. Parr, Lind, and Peterson. On Friday night, the Rockies had a left hander in Jorge De La Rosa. And Para and Peterson were the lefties in the lineup. Lind had the day off on Friday. Those are his splits this year. He has been in a platoon with the Blue Jays for the last few seasons. And he lines one to right, a base hit. That one is going to go all the way out to the wall. And Adam Lind rolling into second. He'll have a two out double here in this second inning. Good piece of hitting there. Adam Lynn turns on one and pulls it down the line. Yep, everything away to him. You know, sliders, fastballs, early in the count. And then Russin tried to get one in on his hands and, you know, left it out over the plate. And a good job by Adam Lynn to pop the hips open, watch him pull the hands in and get the barrel to bat on it. So a mistake by Russin and Lynn able to take advantage of it. So a two out double. Lynn now with 15 doubles to go along with 10 homers. That'll give Hernan Perez an at bat. He takes strike one from Russin. Perez back in the starting lineup once again. Over his last six games, he is seven for 15. He has three of those hits in this series. That really was the question coming in for. Perez is going to be able to hit enough to stay in the big leagues. They like him defensively. He can move all over the diamond. Play him just about anywhere, but will he hit? So he's getting consistent playing time. Swinging the bat pretty well. Uh, with the Tigers, Perez played in 22 games, but only had 33 at bats in those 22 games. So a lot of the times he was coming in either as a defensive replacement, an occasional start. He made just seven starts. Through the first two months of the season. Tough to keep any kind of mm -hmm. consistency going at the plate under those conditions. That's a tough lineup to break into. <laughs> Not a whole lot of opportunities to play over in Detroit. Well, he's been hot lately, and Council continues to reward him with playing time. Those are the numbers over his last six, and it's not just that he's gotten seven hits, but he has three doubles, so he's starting to throw a little slugging percentage at him as well. And playing some good defense. He's got a very good glove and an accurate arm. And Brewers want to see what they have in Perez as we continue here and work in toward next year. And he swings and he drills one through for a base hit. Lind is going to try to score. Here comes the throw from he know it's cut off, and Lind is in. Caught in a rundown is Hernan Perez. And that is how the inning ends. The run will count. Perez drew the cut. 
Adam Lynn scores the run. It's a two out RBI single for Perez. And the Brewers are on the board first here today on Father's Day. Second RBI for Perez as a Brewer. As we were talking about, he drives in a run with two outs. Two outs, nobody on. Perez with a base hit into left. And we've been seeing this the entire series. Outfielders play so deep. No chance of the Brewers not going to send him. Throw off the line. He gets in a rundown. That's not a bad play by Perez to, to draw a throw. He go down as a 7-5 to five to 4 to 3-5 to five put out if you're scoring at home. <laughs> it's like an area code. It is. As Garza deals strike one to Carlos Gonzalez. Now, you never want to make an out on the base pads, but that's the one instance where right. it's yeah. actually okay, especially with a, a slow runner trying to score that run. Especially early in the game. I mean, no score. You're looking to get on the board, and Perez takes off. And you saw Arenado saw him, and he took the shore out. Plus, the throw was a little bit up the line, but Perez had no way of knowing that. Carlos Gonzalez leading off for... The Rockies uh, been a very streaky hitter. Started out extremely hot and uh, had great success in Milwaukee. But then uh, his batting average slipped down near 200 at the end of May. He was able to wrestle it back into the 250s. But he just does not look like the same kind of hitter that won a batting title a few years ago. Doesn't look like the same player. He's had a rough time out in right field at times. In this series, you know, misplaying some some balls in the outfield, but uh, that last year wasn't a very good season for him either. Although he was battling injury, that was back in 2010. Gonzalez won that batting title. He almost won an MVP award that year. This guy can snap out of it quickly, though. That's how good of a hitter he is. You never know when he's going to get hot. He was for a while before the Brewers came into town. Garza in a 3-2 count. Retired the side in order in the first and a swing and a miss. Down he goes. Garza picks up his third strikeout in four batters face to get his day started. This looks like a little bit. The timing's messed up for Gonzalez. I mean, watch his swing. He lets go with one hand. A little bit off balance and just does not look comfortable at the plate. Although... That won't last forever with a guy like him. They try to get out of town before he figures it out. Here's Nolan Arenado. And he swings and lines one to left, a base hit. Thinking about two. Peterson up with it, and he gets it 
unloaded quickly to hold Arenado to a single. First hit for the Rockies. Yeah, attacking that first pitch fastball was up and in. Arenado able to get the barrel of the bat on it. Some kind of hitter, some kind of player, just overall. He can pretty much do it all. There's a pitch we were talking about. It's up, maybe leaked out over the plate a little bit, but able to dump it down the line. That's a good job by Peterson to keep him at first base. He's had an impressive throwing arm since he's come up. Yeah, he's making diving catches. He already has three outfield assists. And that covers you know, the last 10 days of activity for Shane Peterson. When you first come up, I mean, you know, these teams don't know much about him. They're going to test his arm, I guess. He continues to throw the ball like he just did. They're, they're going to stop running on him. Well, one out, a man is on for the Rockies. Here is Ben Paulson. Garza looking for that ground ball double play to get him out of this inning. And he misses low. This guy's been a tough out in this series. Big, tall, left handed hitter. Stands tall, has good leverage. Very good at driving that low pitch. I'll Paul say four for five. <laughs> Paulson had a pinch hit appearance yesterday, and he came up with an RBI hit. It's the second start of the series. He and Willene Rosario splitting time at first base. He's got some Wisconsin ties, does Ben Paulson. He was born in Plymouth, raised in uh, Georgia, but. The Wisconsin ties are on his mother's side, and uh, he wanted to pass along hellos to his grandparents, George and Roxy, and his mother, Leslie Paulson, up there in that uh, Elkhart Lake area, Plymouth area, beautiful country up there, about a, an hour, hour and a half north of downtown Milwaukee. Yeah. Good hitter. Went to a heck of a school, college. Yes, he did. The the university that Bill Schroeder built. <laughs> Clemson. <laughs> and you said it correctly. <laughs> so the S is a Z. It's just the opposite of Boise, Idaho. Where the where the S is a C. Right. Clemson or an, or an S. Don't say Boise. Boise. <laughs> How did Clemson do this year, by the way? Not good. They mm. fired their coach. Oh, got a new one. That's unfortunate. Monty Lee. New coach. Runner goes, and a strike called and out at second. To end the inning, a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Lucroy put it right on the button, and Arenado didn't even bother. I think he thought it might have been ball four, as did Paulson. Not the case. Strike him out, throw him out to in the second inning. And Matt Garza with two shutout out of the gates here in Denver.
Works as a strike them out, throw them out, double play. Happy Father's Day to you all. How about some of these images of uh, Brewers players and their fathers? Yeah, I enjoyed Hector Gomez and his family. That was out at City Field earlier this year. His father, his uncle, his brother. Yeah, nothing like being at the ballpark with dad, right? When's Paco Dave coming to Miller Park? Uh, I hope so. He's coming in August, I think. I mm -hmm. hope he uh, makes it quick. He's gonna, he's gonna do the double dip. He's doing the Brewers baseball slash PGA Championship nice. weekend. Yeah, he's a big golfer. Yeah. In August, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Did you call him today? I sure did. Well, I didn't call him yet. I uh, texted him. We've been going back and forth on the text messages. I don't want to wake him up too early. Well, you're not a card guy, right? No card. Oh, my wife handles the cards. Oh, in the I house. got you. He got one though. Oh, sure. All right. Sure. You don't know what kind of Saturday night Paco has had. you got to give him a, a little bit of time to get the day started. Okay. <laughs> Shane Peterson leads off for the Brew Crew here in the third. No score. Matt Garza versus Chris Russon, a couple of former Cubs. Matching up today. And Brewers need to get, start getting leadoff hitters on base. It's been a while for them. Seems like they're always, you know, they get something going. It's always with one out. Leadoff base runners have been tough to come by in this series. The last 13 leadoff hitters have failed to reach base for Milwaukee. Peterson trying to reach for Matt Garza. It's especially important. For an eighth place hitter leading off to get on that that can set up an inning for you because then it allows the pitcher to bunt and use the sacrifice as a weapon which puts runners in scoring position for the top of the order if you're successful and Peterson does just that he slaps one to the opposite field Peterson can really run and he makes a hard turn around first but will hold with a single. Yeah, good idea. Well, there you go. You start talking about leadoff base runners, you get one. Well done. Now Peterson just continues to impress, you know, taking that pitch to the opposite field, lefty versus lefty. Didn't try and pull it. Not a bad pitch either. He sticks the bat out there, and there's your leadoff base runner. Now Matt Garza can drop down a bunt. Three consecutive hits for the Brewers. Now Lynn Perez, now Peterson. The last inning ended after that cutoff, after the run had scored. So Garza looking for a sacrifice. Garza has three successful sacrifice bunts this year. Has a couple of hits. He's two for 20 this season. And he's even walked this year. One walk, 11 strikeouts. Shows bunt, pulls it back. Hundley blocks it. And it's 2 0 on Garza. Correct counsel with his bench coach, Jerry Naren. Father is John. I knew John, know John very well. He used to work with the Brewers. He's down in Florida. Garza bunts it foul. I asked Craig about his dad. I know how proud John is. That uh, Craig is the the manager of the Brewers. That's uh, quite a story for not just Craig Council but that family. It is a Wisconsin family. Craig was uh, raised in Whitefish Bay, still lives there, as a matter of fact. And uh, he said, yeah, john has he's been good. He's nervous, and he does ask me a lot of questions, a lot of questions that start with, why didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> as Garza bunts that one foul. At two, Dad? That's right. right. That's right. Well, Everybody's I asking me that. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Right? 
That's the beauty of being a big league manager. You get to make those decisions as opposed to asking the person in that seat why he did or did not. Surprised you haven't seen John at the ballpark. He's battling a bit of a bad back, according to Craig. Making it tough to uh, travel. Now John was a heck of a baseball player himself. He came up in the Twins organization and was a great teacher of the game to his son, Craig. And as Rock mentioned, he spent some time in the Brewers' business offices, helping with the community relations back in the county stadium days. Garza again squares, and he bunts right through it. That'll be a strikeout for Russin. Garza unable to advance the runner. That'll be the first out of the inning. And the first strikeout for Chris Russin. Second time up for Segura. Brewers lead it one to nothing, scoring in the second on an RBI from Perez. Cars has been able to post two scoreless innings. This would be a pretty good hit and run situation. Brewers don't do much of it, but you've got Peterson with decent speed, although Russell with a decent move to first. And Gene Segura very good at using that hole between first and second. Let's see if the Brewers put something on here. Like Segura is trying to shoot one in the right. You don't see much hitting and running anymore. It's something that you don't see from any team, not just the Brewers. Now, why do you think that is? Is the trends for, of baseball? Looking for the big innings. You, know, you don't have a lot of contact hitters anymore in baseball. Guys that will go the other way. I mean, you got to have a guy that's willing to put the ball on the ground. Go the other way. That's a huge hole between first and second. But See he has done well against lefties this year, and Russin likes to use the outer half of the plate. And Segura is a free swinger anyway, but especially against left-handed pitching, he's only walked once this year against a lefty, and a cut and a miss. He chased the ball, 0 oh, into the count. And you would think with all the shifting that teams do that the hit and run would be a good way to maybe combat that a little bit. You get those guys that in an awkward defensive position and have them move around a little bit. Maybe open up some holes. No balls, two strikes. Segura in the air left center. That's a base hit. Gene Segura comes up with a two strike hit, an 0 2 pitch. He delivers with a hit and the Brewers cook it here in the third with two on and just one out in the heart of the order coming up yep, and uh, uh, three of the four hits by the Brewers have come on fastballs in from Chris Russin trying to bust him inside Segura doing a good job pulling the hands in and hitting that one hard into left field I forget about the hit and run just you know, take two and hit the left able to dump one into left field. Now, Russin's fastball tops out about 87, 88 miles an hour. He doesn't have that, that blazing heater. And the Brewers have been able to turn on it a couple of times down in the count. Adam Lynn did the same with a double in the second as Para swings and misses. But you got to be able to keep hitters off that outside corner a little bit by coming inside. Guys like Russin, very important. You know, pitchers like Jimmy Key and, and Jamie Moyer and you know, Mike Flanagan back in the old days, I mean, they used the inside corner very effectively. Frank Tanana after he had his surgeries. The softer you throw, the more you have to at least show inside to keep hitters off the outside corner. Straighten them up once in a while. Play by Russin, the second out there. Tulowitzki's turn is in time. Heck of a play by Russin. Hard hit ball by Para. 
Turns it into a 1-6-3 double play just like that gets out of the mess. Brook crew with a one to nothing lead as we head to the bottom of the third. If your dad taught you how to swing and bat, and he's the reason you cheer for the Brewers, he's an all-star in our books. Today, share photos of the all-star father in your life using the hashtag Brewers All-Star Dad. And they could be shown in our broadcast, plus six winning dads. We'll receive Fox Sports Wisconsin sweet tickets. Visit FoxSportsWisconsin.com. Click on the upcoming events tab, and there's old Paco Dave. Happy Father's Day, Paco, and Principal Pete. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Yeah, taking a picture in uh, Vancouver. I, it looked at me I'm like I had an O for that day. <laughs> Just uh, guessing on the odds. Yeah. I well, no, I didn't have many Ofers in the minor leagues. They all came in the big leagues. So you specifically remember that you had an O for, and then you took no, this picture? No, I'm, I'm just trying to be humorous. He's cheered you up. Talked to Dad today. Doing well. He's coming out in July. All right. You sent him a card? I did. Nice. I sent him a card. <laughs> oh, you're a good son. Cards are a big deal for my dad. I mean, he, he takes those things seriously. He'll, he will tell me. He said, you know, you just sent me a card. I could have been your postman. Wasn't much feeling to that card. So I've t I spent a little bit more time finding cards these days. <laughs> nice. And laying down a little bit of the Father's Day protocol. And I noticed you've carried on the tradition with your children. Yeah. I don't expect gifts. I don't need gifts. Right. A text, a phone call, a card. <laughs> Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> you don't ask a lot. You're just, you just want to have I guess some kind is, of contact. That is a lot, right? That's three things oh, I require man, him to do. Asking a lot for sure. Huntley fouls it back to the net, and that'll even the count at two and two. What else do they have to do on a Sunday? Right? They get text, call. Right. All present and accounted for, all three of them. They stay in the will one all, more year. All three are in already. <laughs> nice. Yeah. How about, uh, how yeah. about granddaughter, oh, Madeline? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got she it. in as well? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. FaceTimed her today. Yeah. Nothing better. Here's a 2-2. And Hundley breaks his bat. Long run. Perez can't get there. A base hit. Nick Hundley with a shattered bat single to start this third inning. Matter of fact, Madeline may be a little picture for Father's Day. I'm going to be hanging in the booth on Tuesday. Just to let you know. Can't wait. Now Garza will face Raffaele Noah. Switch hitting utility man who gets a start in left field today. His first start of the series.
Runner goes, and a ground ball, hit and run on there. Shovel to second, and safe. Perez dropped the ball. That was a hot feed from Segura. It probably would have been best to just take the sure out at first. In hindsight, maybe trying to do a little too yeah, much with that to, one. Trying to get a double play, but uh, that was a pretty good jump by Nick Hundley. I think if you're Segura, you're thinking the catcher's at first base. Might take him a little bit longer to get down, but that was a hit and run. We were just talking about hit and run. So Hundley takes off. He would have been out, but he dropped the baseball. A second base umpire, Bill Miller, was going to ring him up. Drops the baseball. They get nobody. Watch the umpire. He's ready to ring him up. I'm not sure he was out. That was a close range toss by Segura. He threw it hard and Perez can't handle it. So now two on to start this inning. And the pitcher Russin up there to try to bunt. He gets it down. It's a good one. Luke Roy's only play is first. And just got him a little snow cone in the glove of Hernan Perez. That ball was ticketed for right field. Pretty good play by Perez to secure the out. Sacrifice bunt for Chris Russin. Yeah, tough catch too. I mean, it looked like it crossed the runner. Russell was getting down that line pretty well. It's a beautiful bunt. I mean, he drops it right in front of Lucroy. He has to go out and get it. And check out this play by Perez. Reaching across, and that could have easily been knocked out of his glove if Russin hits his arm. So Garza in his first real trouble of the afternoon, second and third with one out. Top of the order coming up, Charlie Blackman. Ground to second. Perez is only play his first. That will get a run in for Colorado and Blackman with an RBI. And this game is all tied at one. Nobody has hit the ball hard in this inning. I mean, a little jam shot off the bat of Hundley. Then you had the ground ball. The Brewers weren't able to get anybody. And there's one right off the end of the bat, a ground ball to drive in the first run for Colorado. So you know, Matt Garza has been throwing the ball well today, but the Rockies able to scratch out a run. Two men are out. A run is in on a hit and an error. Here's DJ LeMahieu with a runner at third. The scoring on that batted ball by Noah goes fielder's choice to Inoa. And an E4 on Perez. And the reason that it was an error was because it looked like the umpire was going to ring him up as an out, but he dropped the ball. Then he called him safe. Now Perez gets the air, but I'm sure Segura takes a bit of the blame as well. I mean, he was trying to hustle it over there as fast as he could. Just one of those plays. So much for the consecutive airless streak for the Brewers. We were talking about that when we came on the air tonight. Six in a row. That ends today. Well, there's two ways to look at it. Either you jinxed them, or it was good that we got it in while they had a consecutive errorless streak. I like the latter. The latter sounds a lot better. There's a base hit to right. And another run is going to score. You know, he's in on a two out single to right field by LeMahieu. And that's what he does, LeMahieu. Looked like uh, Garza was able to get it on his hands, but able to fight it off, thinking right field, and shot that hole between first and second. I can hit. He just slices it into right field. Not trying to do too much. Not much of a stride. Just picks it up, sets it down that front foot, and drives in another run. Two runs are in for Colorado here in the third inning. Blackman and LeMahieu with RBIs. And the bases now with one on, and LeMahieu for Tulowitzki. Tulowitzki had surgery on his hip last year. Injury plague season. He's had a tough time staying on the field throughout his career. When he is on the field and when he is healthy, he has, is as good as anybody in the game. There goes LeMahieu. And the pitch is too tough to handle for Luke Croy. That'll be a stolen base. 
Yeah, just tried to be a little bit too quick on the breaking pitch. It was a curveball. Well, you take off and you guess curveball. Better chance you're going to make it. You always want to try and run on an off-speed pitch. A slider down in the dirt. And Lucroy not able to hold on to it. Lucroy does have a caught stealing in this game. To Lewitsky in a 2 1 count now. So when you see the opposition running like the Rockies are today, that usually indicates that they've got something on the pitcher. They feel like they can steal bases. Ours a, a little slow unwinding it. Two balls and a strike. And Tulowitzki fouls it back. He got jammed. He chased one up and in. Yep, ate him up. Swung at another pitch out of the strike zone. We've seen a lot of that from Tulowitzki in this series. He struck out on a pitch that was off the plate in the first inning. Trying to be a little over anxious, I guess, driving that run from second base. Base hit. LeMahieu's going to try to score. Peterson's throw is off the mark. A run is in to Lewitsky to second. And three runs for Colorado. It is now three to one. The stolen base comes around and ends up costing the Brewers a run. Well, we were talking about airless baseball for the Brewers. They make one in this inning. We were talking about. The great throwing arm of Shane Peterson as well when we came on the air today. And that one way off the mark. And Tulowitzki able to get into second base because of the bad throw into home plate. That's not even close. Back to back RBI singles with two outs have the Rockies in the lead now three to one. It's been a three run inning. Carlos Gonzalez now. Still two men out. Tulowitzki ends up at second base. Garza trying to stop the bleeding here in the third. Popped him up. Gerardo Para creeping in. And he's got it for the out. That will retire the side, but. The Colorado Rockies score three times. They get two of them with two outs.
Scored all three of those runs are unearned against Matt Garza. Say you can take a guided tour of the Lower Dells Glacial Park aboard the Dells Army Ducks. Discover the sandstone rock formations of the Wisconsin River and cruise Lake Delton on a one-hour land and water excursion, which is sure to be one of the most unique ways to experience the Dells. The Dells Army Ducks. Craig and Augie hanging out at the Dells all weekend long. We'll be checking in with them a little later in the broadcast and for the Brewers Live postgame show today. Chris Russell now has a lead to work with as he returns to the mound. Three to one Rockies. Ryan Braun will lead off for the Brewers. Braun in the air to right, hit pretty well. Back is Gonzalez up against the wall. He can't get it. High off the wall, takes a huge bounce. Braun's got a chance to score here. He is around third. He's going to be held. Yeah, good idea. That's yeah. good coaching right there. I mean, he knew Braun was thinking about it. Look where Ed Cedar is when he holds the runner. He is almost at the cutout at home plate. He was thinking about it, and so was Eddie. <laughs> If that first throw is not on the mark, he's going to send him. Well, Ryan Braun, second triple of the year. We've seen a number of triples on this road trip. Got under it, but we're here at Coors Field. Now check out Gonzalez. And he has to chase it down. If this first throw is not a good one, he's going to send him. Perfect strike from LeMayhew, the second baseman. Look where Ed Cedar is, the third base coach. Yeah. That's because Braun was busting it around third base. I mean, he was in that <laughs> coach's box. There's no way that Braun would have been able to see him. So Ryan Braun starts the inning with a triple. Here is Lucroy now. now. Ryan Braun, he wasn't sure. He wasn't fast out of the gates. Otherwise, he might have a chance to score. He turned on the burners after he saw it hit the wall. And he looked up just in time to see Ed Cedar. And a good thing, too, he would have been out. And it's always a little more difficult to catch your breath here in the Mile High City after a jaunt like that. Now we'll see if the Brewers can cash it in. Braun with a leadoff triple. Lucroy at the plate. Ramirez due next. Didn't look like to me Gonzalez got too far off the ground for that fly ball. I mean, I'm not sure where it hit. Really couldn't tell. And it didn't really get up. You know, he he kind of drifted to the wall. If he got to the wall quickly and jumped straight up, might have been able to make that catch. That's what we're talking about. It just doesn't seem like himself. Now, this is a former gold glove outfielder we're talking about, and Carlos Gonzalez. Made a couple of misplays in this series. Based on the sound of the ball, it hit above the padding. Just out of his reach. Yeah, yeah it hit right off the, the marker of the Houston yeah. Seattle. Yeah, score. that would have been a good catch. I mean, uh, you can't blame him for that. That ball was up over his glove. Luke Roy. Oh, what a catch by LeMayhew. He might be the only second baseman in the big leagues that can make that play. Standing at 6'4. LeMayhew takes a hit and an RBI away from Jonathan Lucroy. Yeah, perfectly timed leap. And, you know, Lucroy doing what he has to do, taking it to the opposite field. In the webbing, able to hold on to it and save a run for the time being. My, what a catch. I mean, he's positioned perfectly up the middle. Lucroy hits it right at him, but a great vertical leap for LeMayhew, able to haul it in. What a catch. A gold glove second baseman last year, and he's showing that form right there. Braun still at third. Ramirez breaks his bat. There's nobody on that side. Braun will score easily, and LeMayhew makes a great play to get it out. Man, oh, man. What a performance in this inning by the second baseman, D.J. LeMayhew. Yeah, great counsel is out. He wants his video crew to take a look at it. But I tell you, LeMayhew wasn't even close to that baseball when it was first hit. That's about as hard as we've seen. Ramirez run. Look where LeMahieu is. He's deep and he's on the other side of the bag. The question is, is Paulson on the base? 
according to Craig Council, he is. No review. Just a flick of the wrist over there to get Ramirez. Yep. Heck of a play. Back to back great plays by the Colorado second baseman. I'll tell you what, those are game changers right there. But the Brewers do have a run in. Credit Ramirez with an RBI on that 4 3 ground out. Two men are out now. The bases are empty for Adam Lynn. And the shift is on for Lind as well. You know, the tough part of that play for LeMahieu, I mean, as far as he was going, he was running pretty much at full steam, able to bend down and make a good throw. And good balance, and that's tough to do for a big guy like him. This is Arenado this time. He's the only infielder over there. And he makes a play to end the inning. That was a nice play by the third baseman. Brewers get a run. 3-2 Colorado now. Colorado as the Rockies have a one to nothing lead and next Sunday June 28th it's Paul Molitor bobblehead day at Miller Park. The Brewers go head to head with the Minnesota Twins in the series finale of their annual border battle and all fans will get a bobblehead of Brewers legend Paul Molitor courtesy of Clements. Visit Brewers.com for tickets. Matt Garza back to work. We start the fourth inning here with the Rockies coming up. Brewers scoring a run on the top of the fourth. Ryan Braun tripled. He scored on a ground out by Ramirez. 3 2 Colorado and a big swing and a miss by Arenado. Was it going to get a fastball again, first pitch? Hit that down the line his last time up. Amazed at the athleticism of DJ LeMahieu. I mean, both of those plays that inning, exceptional. That ball's hit high and deep to left. Arenado will watch this one go. A home run for the Rockies third baseman. His club leading 17th of the season. And the Rockies get that run back quickly. This guy is an emerging superstar in the game. With the glove and the bat. Yeah, it looked like he doubled up on the breaking pitch and left that one up in the strike zone and Arenado got good wood on it about halfway up the bleachers out there in left field. A no doubter here at Coors Field. Paulson on the ground right to Segura takes a big hop on him. And the next pitch produces an out for Matt Garza. Nolan Arenado with that home run is now sixth in the National League in homers and he's fourth in the league in RBIs. He's got two more hits today. There's not a lot of discussion about Nolan Arenado around baseball among the elite third baseman, but this could be the year though. Mm -hmm. He was a gold glover last year. If he makes the all-star team, which he should, that's going to put him in a different 
class of player moving forward. You know, LeMahieu makes those two outstanding plays last inning. But Arenado made a terrific play on Lind as well. He's essentially out of position with the shift on. He's the only infielder on the left side. And makes a little scoop and a throw on the run. He flips it sidearm and man, has something on it and very rarely if ever throws one away. He's got seven errors this year, which seems like a lot for him. We saw Carlos Gonzalez being tended to in the dugout. He was uh, clutching at his left hand in the field after that brawn triple. And something's bothering him here enough for the athletic trainer to take a look. Never a good sign to see one of your stars injured. And the Rockies have seen a lot of that in Gonzalez and Tulowitzki, unfortunately. Nick Hundley at a 2 2 count. Had a single his last time up. Broke his bat, little flare into center field. That one also into center field, and that is going to fall a base hit. Just reached out and served one into left center, a base hit for Hundley, who is two for two against Garza today. A couple of bloops into center field, but the point is, he puts the bat on the baseball. You don't have to hit the ball right on the screws every time. You put it in play, give yourself a chance, and that's what Hundley's done. First two times up today. I'd say Gerardo Parra can't wait to get back to Miller Park. He has been patrolling two very huge center fields on this road trip. Kansas City and now Colorado. A lot of room to cover out there. Now Carlos Gomez did run the bases today. He is hoping to be back on Tuesday when the Brewers start their series against the Mets. Taking the weekend to try to let that injured hip Heel a little bit. Another broken bat. That's going to fall to base hit. Rafaeli Noah has a knock in this fourth inning. The third hit of the inning. And two on with one away for Garza. He does have the pitcher coming up, Russin. Yeah, he's probably going to bunt anyway, even though there is only is one out already. Pitch is up. That's why you know is able to dump it into center field to get that pitch down. It might be a double play ball. You know, pitchers complain about you know broken bad hits or little jam shots. It's because you know they're up in the strike zone. That stuff doesn't happen when you're down in the zone. Not as much anyway. Russin was able to drop down a sacrifice bunt in the third. And both of those runners came in to score in that third inning, the two that he advanced. Two on with one away. Colorado has a 4 2 lead. They have seven hits already. We play in the fourth. Runners go. Swing and a miss. Nobody at third. Ramos Ramirez was playing in. He just stays put. Something broke down defensively for the Brewers right there. I don't know. That's a, <laughs> I'm not sure who you expect to be at third base. I mean, they had the wheel play on. Ramirez is charging to protect against the bun. There he is. If anything, Segura's got to get a bit of a quicker break to third base. I think that's what the breakdown was. And didn't have a play at second base, and now they have to bring the infield in. That's just a mental error by Segura. Gura's responsibility there is to beat the runner to third base. Makes that a very difficult throw for Lucroy, though. Even if he's yeah, I mean, ahead of him, he's got to hit a moving yeah, that, target that's to That's a third. tough play to defend. That's what I was going to say. I mean, you really can't lay that on, you know, squarely on one player. I mean, that's just an interesting play. The steal and the wheel play. And the key to that is that Russin did not bunt the baseball. He let it go. That was a smart play. Nick Hundley is a catcher, but he does run well. Actually, he swung at that baseball, didn't he? The butcher boy played. Missed it. 
Here's a 2 2 and Russin puts the ball in play right to Ramirez. So after all of that really no harm done. Second and third with two away now and Garza has to go through the top of the order to get through this inning. Frustrating day defensively for the Brewers. They've been playing good defense throughout a, a stretch here, especially on this road trip. Tough hitter at the plate. Blackman takes ball one. And that last inning is a perfect example of how the Brewers allowed three runs to score, really turned what should have been maybe one run. Most likely no runs right. into a, a scoring inning for Colorado. Three and then yeah. con conversely how the Rockies were able. To allow just one run on what should have been a big inning for the Brewers. Right. And a difference defense D.J. LeMayhew kept the Brewers. It's only one run. And a couple of miscues and who knows what's going to happen in this inning. Second and third, Charlie Blackman in a 1 1 count. Breaks his bat, and that one's going to fall. This will bring in two runs. Three little flares in this inning, and Colorado now with six on the board. It is six to two. Two RBI single by Charlie Blackman. He's got three RBIs today. Well, they haven't hit the ball all that hard, have they, today? Arenado hit that home run, but other than that, it hasn't been a whole lot of bullets. A jam shot. Garza got in on his hands, but because Ryan Braun has to play so deep in his ballpark, falls in front of him, and with two outs, both runners taking off on contact. Boy. Another three-run inning. And watch for Blackman to try to steal the base here. Garza thinking the same thing. 6 2 Colorado. Charlie Blackman with his second consecutive three RBI performance. It's only the fourth inning. DJ LeMayhew now, and Garza steps off again. Don't see Garza throw over very often. Rockies know that. Blackman's got a huge lead at first. Huge lead. They're just daring Garza to throw over there. But she doesn't. Yeah, which makes it difficult for Lucro to throw out base runners. I mean, it's one thing to hold runners, but if you're not really all that willing to throw to first, I mean, base runners are going to be able to take huge leads. I mean, if you step off, they just come get back. Hold the baseball, no big deal. Him over there at first base. And taking uh, crow hops. You know, Garza on the rubber. And the throw to first and just back is Blackman. There you go. That's how to that'll keep him close. Stop that. Garza, we mentioned, he rarely throws over there. The Rockies forcing him into it. And Lynn doesn't put a tag on. Yeah, we've seen Blackman. that quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> 
On to the count to LeMahieu. Now the crowd is kind of caught on here. And Blackman with that sizable lead. He takes off. Pitches a fastball. Lucroy's throw to second in time. And Blackman he is cut down. So all of that activity. Lucroy throws out his second of the game. But the Colorado Rockies have added three more to their lead. Charlie Blackman has three RBIs today. It is 6 2 Colorado. Wisconsin is brought to you by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. By Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. And by Hupie and Abraham, 800-800-5678. Hupie and Abraham, tell them you mean business. Now Matt Garza and the Brew Crew down 6-2 now. Frustrating inning for Garza and the Brewers. Three little flares fall. Yep. Three runs scored. There was a home run to start the inning by Arenado. New right fielder is Brandon Barnes. So, you know, the speculation that Carlos Gonzalez was not right at the plate. Now it gives us a little more context. He's out with a hand injury. And Barnes will take over in right. Let's take a look if we can find something with. Much a left hand. What's it hit? It goes right up. Maybe uh, you know, hit the chain link fence. Maybe he hyper extended the the hand a little bit. Maybe a wrist injury. Who knows? Hernan Perez leads off for the Brewers here in the fifth inning. So no more Gonzalez in this game. Barnes will hit clean up and play right field. Perez, a ground ball to third. Arenado, a spin and a throw in time. Boy, he makes it look so easy over there. And most third basemen are going to, you know, take a couple of crow hops, throw over the top. He throws sidearm all the time. Gets something on it, and he's very accurate to first base. At least that's what we've seen in this series. This has incredible hands, so much confidence. Shane Peterson now with one away. Arenado is wearing flip downs, which is a dying bird here in the big leagues. You don't see many players go right. with the flip downs anymore. Back up the middle, Russin stabs one. He's made a couple of good plays on the mound. This Colorado defense showing up strong here in this final game of the series. Hey, next week the Brewers return to Miller Park for a jam-packed homestand featuring a three-game set with the New York Mets Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, followed by a showdown with the Minnesota Twins. That's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Great seats are still available. Starting at just 15 bucks. Go to Brewers.com for tickets. 
Garza will bat with two away. Two quick outs for Chris Russon. The stylish lefty. That's what you call left handers that don't throw hard. Crafty. They're stylish. Stylishly crafty. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got Garza down 0 2. There's a lot of other names that players call him, but we'll, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> That's right. And Garza strikes out. Inning is over. A quick one. Eight pitches for Russin in the fifth. Brewers go three up, three down. To lead for the Rockies and join Brewers pitcher Matt Garza and his teammates for the Brewers Bowlathon on Sunday, July 19th. Enjoy a VIP reception, silent auction, of course, bowling with the Brewers players while raising money for the Sojourner Family Peace Center and safe haven for abused women and children. For information, visit Brewers.com slash Beyond the Diamond or call 414-902-4532. Well read, Rock. Well read. That's a lot of R's. That's a, that's a lot of, that's a meaty promo right there. You got through flawlessly. <laughs> Congratulations. I've been uh, spent a little bit more time concerning myself with the promos. Now that I have to do the crew in the community, we have no sideline reporter that's been uh, lapped on my lap. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. You're pulling extra duty yes. here this week. God, plow horse no, up here. <laughs> no Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> Garza. Starts the fifth inning here and facing DJ LeMayhew, who was at the plate when Charlie Blackman was thrown out trying to steal second. Two three run innings, back to back three run innings for the Rockies. And it is six to two, Colorado. DJ LeMayhew has put on a clinic defensively today, and he also has an RBI single. Had a two out RBI single in the third inning. Stole the base that inning. Rockies got RBIs from Blackman, LeMahieu, and Tulowitzki in the third. LeMahieu and Tulowitzki with two out hits. Home run from Arenado in the fourth, and then Blackman drove in two with a two out single. Bouncing ball, Segura. One away. I saw where the Washington Nationals today not only got a home run from Bryce Harper, which is news because he's homered in back to back games when the many thought he was headed for the disabled list, but they swept the Pirates. Mm -hmm. They scored nine runs in the first inning today, and they beat Pittsburgh nine to two. Yeah, Bryce Harper with 24 home runs now. Not a bad player. John Carlos Stanton is the National League leader 
with 25 home runs. Tulowitzki in the air, deep left center field. Para will run it down at the warning track. Long, loud out for Troy Tulowitzki. Yeah, bottom line for the Rockies, doesn't pay to hit the ball so solidly. A lot of most of the base hits. Having on the end down on the handle, Tulowitzki hit that one pretty well. And Para right there for it. First at bat for Brandon Barnes. Came in the game for Carlos Gonzalez. Leaving with an apparent hand injury, left hand. And he swings at the first pitch. Speaking of home runs in the National League, Todd Frazier homer today. The Reds beat the Marlins 5 to 2. Frazier hit number 23. He is going to be the center of attention at the All Star game yep. in Cincinnati this year, you would think. That'll be a fun home run hit contest in Cincinnati. John Carlos Stanton said he would participate if asked. Consider yourself asked. <laughs> There's going to be some uh, mammoth shots in that ballpark. Joanna Cespedes, back to back winner of the home run derby. He's now in Detroit. No balls, two strikes. And Barnes lays off one. Close pitch. Just missed. Phillies roughed up the Cardinals today. Philadelphia beat St. Louis 9 to 2, so. Pittsburgh not losing any ground to the Cardinals in the National League Central. In the Central, currently, the Cardinals have a six game lead over the Pirates. The Cubs won today. They got a shutout from Jake Arrieta. They beat Minnesota 8 0, so the Cubs are now seven back of the Cardinals. Garza, I think that went off his hand, and Segura cannot make the play. So that'll be an infield hit for Brandon Barnes. Plenty of nickel and dimers today for the Colorado Rockies. And not a good idea for Garza to grab that one with his bare hand. I mean, that's the way you break a finger. That's going to be a base hit. And once that ball changed direction, took a bad hop on Segura. And a base hit for Barnes. Barnes was booking down the line as well. Segura knew he had to hurry it up. If uh, Garza didn't get a piece of it, I think Segura is going to be able to make an easy play. That is the ninth hit of the game for Colorado. The Brewers do have an error today. And first ball swinging Arenado. Ramirez makes the play to second for the out. A hot one. Nice play over there at the hot corner by Aramis Ramirez. Scoreless inning for Garza, 6 2 Colorado.
Players are coming to bat. Hades 360 at Mount Olympus Water and Theme Park is the world's first upside-down wooden roller coaster. The largest coaster in the park, Hades 360, also features a drop of 134 feet and a 90-degree turn underground, a speed of 70 miles per hour. All part of the fun at Wisconsin Dell. Are you a roller coaster guy? Oh, yeah, I'm into it. Oh, yeah? Sure. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I'm, I'll take my adventure only so far. Like, I like to draw the line at Rocky Mountain oysters and jumping out of airplanes. Hey, you didn't like those uh, Rocky Mountain oysters? No? I did not. Is that a, that's a ballpark cuisine they yeah. serve here? No, they have them here. It's a big thing here. It's a lot of restaurants. Where do they get their product from? I, I don't want to know. <laughs> Gene Segura leads off. He swings and sends one to left. That is Zenoa out there to make the play for the out. But thanks for being a good sport and playing along and having one. Sure. Well, I've had them before, you know. I just try not to make a habit of it. Of course. Yeah, I grew up in the country. So, and just because of that, we didn't fry ours. No. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say at this nah, point. This conversation is yeah, going in the wrong yeah, direction. I think maybe we should uh, <laughs> switch the <to laughs> kale chips. That's right. You're dangerously close to a phone call from Tyler Barnes right now. <laughs> VP of Communications. Send him an email. Tell him how great you think. Yeah. You <laughs> no, but they really do. They serve Rocky Mountain oysters here at the ballpark, and uh, it comes with fries. And, and if you don't know what they are, Google it. <laughs> Gerardo Parra with one away. Sixth inning from Denver on Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all of you out there. And fathers to be. Mm -hmm. It's the first Father's Day for our esteemed pregame producer, Brad Weimer, today. So happy Father's Day to Brad. Carsoup.com trivia. Who are the three players in Brewers history to save 40 games in a season? Good question. One of them is in the Rockies bullpen and having a good year. And he's a father. Probably too much of a hint right there, I'm guessing. He's a father. Everybody knows that, though. He is. He certainly is. Father of two. Two balls, two strikes. Parra's 0 for 2. He's looking for his first hit. Shattered bat. Slow roller to Tulowitzki. Gloves and throws. And throws it into the camera well. So Parra will be awarded second base. That'll be an infield hit and a throwing error. And the Brewers put a man in scoring position here with one out. Could have been, uh, you know, a straight air. Look at how late it was. You know, Tulowitzki took a long time to get to that baseball. We've been talking about his mobility, not what it used to be, with all the leg injuries that he's had. And that throw not even close. So uh, I guess they're going to call it a base hit and an error. Yep. Throwing error allows Para to second base. So a man in scoring position for Ryan Braun. Brewers down four, trying to chip away here in the sixth. Braun had a triple his last time up. And a shot right off the pitcher. Russin recovers, throws, and is out at first. Yeah, good play. Wow, nice recovery. But Braun hit that like a shot right off the pitcher. Russin. And his teammates converging around him to give him a moment. Well, he got there quickly, he made a good throw. Ryan Braun hustling down that line, sniffing a base hit. Ooh. Did he get the get a glove on it? Not sure, but look how quickly he's able to get to it and just barely getting Braun at first base. Yeah, I don't think so. I think no. that that hit him in the left side. That is a heck of a play by Russell. He has really 
shown a good glove in this game. You don't really think about that or talk about that much from pitchers, but he's had a number of plays today and he's made them all. So two men are out. Hara is now at third base for Lucroy. Lucroy has lined out twice. Could easily have two hits in this game. And the last one was that great leaping catch by LeMahieu. That took not only a hit away, but an RBI as well from Lucroy. Yeah, Bruins on third base. That was right after Bruins triple. And as hard as Lucroy hit that ball, that, that might have had a chance to split the gap or at least allow Lucroy to think about a double. These wide open open spaces here. This is an extra base hit palace. Coors yeah. Field in Denver. That and taking extra base hits once you're on first already. Outfitters play so deep, such a long throw into the bases. We've seen it the entire series. Everything in this ballpark equals offense. Pitchers don't get much of a break here. I was surprised they uh, cut the infield grass down as they have. You right. know, I remember the infield grass, uh, at least they were trying to give pitchers a little bit of help. They used to grow that infield grass a little higher, which would uh, take a little heat off ground balls, slow them down a bit. That's not the case anymore. Lucroy deep left field. He know it going back. He first broke in. That's over his head. And it bounces up and out of here for a ground rule double. That'll bring in a run. Para scores. And Lucroy with an RBI double with two outs in the sixth to make it 6 3 Colorado. Now finally able to you know find a hole and get some outfield grass for Lucroy. And well, he just drops the head on that pit. Look at it was down and no, I'm not sure how well he played. He was playing deep anyway. That was a slider cutter down and in. Luke Roy drops the head of the bat on it. Nice easy swing for Luke. Kind of a late break out there in left field and one hopping out of here. Steve Foster, the Colorado pitching coach, his first appearance on the mound in this series, believe it or not. He makes a lot of them in this ballpark. Steve's got some uh, connections to Wisconsin. Not only did he marry a Wisconsin girl, but he he was part of that Wausau Woodchucks mm -hmm. program. He right. managed that team and ran that ball club. Is in the Woodchucks Hall of Fame. I actually uh, attended his induction in that Hall of Fame a few years back. Okay. He gave a great speech. That's a great uh, college league. They're in uh, high gear right now. The North Woods League. A wood bet league for college players. Well, Ramos Ramirez with a runner at second. Six to three. Colorado with two three run innings. Brewers have RBIs today from Perez. Ramirez. And Lucroyes. <laughs> Ramirez pops it up. And that will retire the side. So the Brewers chip away a little bit. They get one back. Jonathan Lucroy. Two line drive outs. He turns a changeup into a ground rule double and an RBI.
the six. The Rockies are coming up with a lead. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Boys and Girls Clubs help young people reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens through programs that promote character and leadership, education, healthy lifestyles, and more. For more information, visit FoxSportsSupports.com. Matt Garza starts his sixth inning of work. He has given up six runs. Only three of those are earned. And Paulson starts it. Swing it away at the first pitch. Paulson starting his second game here in this series against the Brew Crew. Justin Morneau is still out with a cervical sprain. And concussion like symptoms. There's a little flare to right center. That's going to fall. Oh, every time, huh? There has been a ton of those today against Matt Garza. There have been too many hard hit balls by the Rockies, but you wouldn't be able to tell that on a scoreboard. Ten hits now for Colorado. Garza allowed a career high 13 hits his last time out against Kansas City. 13 hits. This feels a lot like his start against the Royals where yeah. he he pits deep into that game. He went into the seventh. But allowed six runs on 13 hits. He's given up six runs on 10 hits. Albeit. Three of those unearned. And here is Nick Hundley who is two for two today. Half the hits have come on breaking balls from Garza today, including Arenado's home run. A hanging curveball. He's had a pretty good fastball. He's been able to get in on their hands, but able to muscle them into the outfield for the most part. It's pitched much better than the scoreboard would tell you. You know, that's the thing about when the defense struggles behind a pitcher, especially here in Colorado. You know, not only are extra runs coming in or extra batters you having to face extra batters it turns the lineup over. So it has a, an effect moving forward. And then that's when those big innings come it seems. Ours should have been out of that third with no runs. And in the box score it looks like. An error by Hernan Perez was the one that set the inning up, and he's the one that got the error, and rightly so. But really, the the play broke down with Segura, and Segura trying to maybe force a chance at a double play instead of taking the sure out at yeah, first. Yeah, an easy out at first base. Yep. So those are the little things that happen. Adam Lynn not applying a tag. Which would have been an out on a pickoff at first base. And a poor throw in from left field, which allowed a base runner to advance to Lewitsky, who would later come in to score. Yeah, so. A lot of things uh, defensively for the Brewers this season have not really shown up as errors. Yeah, the little things, plays that should have been made that have not been made, and have really cost the Brewers a lot of runs this year. One ball, two strikes. Got a runner at first, and Hundley takes ball two. By the way, they did uh, send a report on Carlos Gonzalez, the Rockies' right fielder who left the game. He left with a mild sprain of the left hand. Hundley in the right center. That is trouble. That's going to get down. And go to the wall. Coming around is Paulson. He will score. And the Rockies add to their lead. It is now seven to three. Is Nick Hundley with his third hit of the day? Drives that one. Uh, splits the gap out there in right center. The Rockies uh, seems like everything they touch has been a base hit. Talked about the breaking pitches for Matt Garza. That was a fastball down, and Hunley pulls the hands in and shoots it into right center. And by the time Parr catches up to it, as far as he had to go to get it, Paulson able to score. Once again, the Rockies 
get one right back after the Brewers score. Three for three the Rockies catcher and his 23rd RBI of the year. Enoa has been on twice. He swings at the first pitch. Another little flare. That's going to be a tough play. Perez over the shoulder. Can't make the catch. It's been a nightmare. It has absolutely been a nightmare. The base hits that have been able to drop in this game. You know, jam shots off the end of the bat. Would have been a nice play, but Hernan Perez, I tell you, should have made the play. And it will be a base hit, I would imagine. And a little, little pop up. I mean, Matt Garza deserves much better fate today, for sure. And no way the outfielders are going to be able to get there as deep as they have to play, even with you know, a contact hitter, spray hitter at the plate. Left hander Neil Kotz in the Brewers' bullpen. Rick Kranitz, the pitching coach, is out for a word with Garza. First three batters have reached on hits. It is seven to three Colorado and the Rockies with two on nobody out. And Walt Weiss is going to go for the knockout punch here in the sixth inning. He'll take his pitcher out. He'll use a pinch hitter with Lean Rosario is a very good hitter with some pop. And the way Russian has struggled his previous two starts Walt Weiss. Tickled to death to have the lead here in the sixth. So he needs out of his starter today. Well, Lean Rosario with two on and nobody out. As a pinch hitter this year, he's been terrific. Six hits, one of those a home run. Appeared as a pinch hitter on Friday. The Brewers retired him. He started yesterday's game. Rosario was one for three. Now a former catcher, William Rosario. Yeah, Rosario's home run came as a pinch hitter against the Brewers in that first series of the year. That was a sweep. By the Rockies. That was a 10th inning home run that won the game. Game three of that series. Rosario high fly ball to right. Hundley's going to tag. And he's just bluffing. Braun makes a catch for the first out of the inning. Big back to retire for Garza. Back to the top of the order now. And Charlie Blackman. Blackman with three more RBIs today, three yesterday as well. He's having a big series for Colorado. First and second with one away. Blackman is a tough guy to double up if you're thinking about a ground ball double play here. He runs well. Used to be only the big burly guys who had home runs grew beards like this. <laughs> yeah. Now it's the it's the speed guys. Everybody's like, growing them yeah, now. Everybody. It's fashionable. It's a playoff beard. Beards and bow ties. All come in full circle. Hard hit ball through a base hit. They're gonna send Hundley. 
Braun's throw goes to third base, which will allow Blackman to advance. Well, throwing to the wrong base. You throw into second to keep the double play alive. Throw into third, and, and now Blackman able to get into second. He's in scoring position. No possible double play. Another RBI for Charlie Blackman, his fourth of the game on his second hit. And that's going to do it for Matt Garza. He is on his way out. And again, just a, another throw, a poor throw. Bad decision by Braun allowing Blackman to second. Trying to keep a double play intact. It's been that kind of game for the Brewers. Garza has given up eight runs on 13 hits, but he has had some very poor defense behind him. Here comes Cotts. Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. And by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. Well, there are very few endearing moments in this game thus far. Garza is out. The Rockies lead 8-3. to three. Brewers are playing dreadful defense in this one. And Craig Council is out to give the ball to Neil Cotts. Going to bring the infield in here. Two on, both in scoring position. One man out here in the Colorado sixth. And you got a couple of tough right handers coming up. DJ LeMayhew trying to add to his already successful day. One for three, drove in a run with a two out single in the third. He's made two. Gold glove caliber plays defensively as well. Might have changed the flow of this game. You never know. Yeah. yeah good defense, certainly a momentum swing for you. And yeah, Neil Koss last pitched on Wednesday at Kansas City. Outstanding work. Two scoreless innings, gave up a hit and a strikeout. Hasn't given up a run in ten of his last appearance appearances. Matt Garza exits five and a third here today. 13 hits at this point. Eight runs, five earned. No walks, four strikeouts for Garza. Did give up a home run to Arenado. He's got a couple of runners that are his responsibility. Four hits in this inning already. Charlie Blackman, by the way, with a season high four RBIs. One off his career best, the Colorado leadoff hitter. Yeah, that means the bottom of the order is getting on base a lot. And they have. Blackman has six hits in this series and seven runs batted in. The bottom of the Colorado batting order, starting with their six hitter Paulson, 
have been on base seven times in this game. LeMahieu draws a walk. And the bases are loaded. And Troy Tulowitzki is coming up. Marshfield Clinic leaders in relief. Brewers actually putting together one of the better bullpens since late May. Yeah. 201 earned run average. The Cubs have been the best. Look at that. Three of the or the top three, all National League Central teams, and four of the top five in the same division, right? Well, trouble right here with Tulowitzki up with the bases loaded. Cots does get ground balls with that cut fastball, especially against right handed hitters. Kulowitzki hitting over 430 against lefties this year. He has grounded into nine double plays. Brewers are desperate for one here. Corey Knabel is getting loose in a hurry in the Milwaukee bullpen. Garza started the inning, gave up three straight hits to start the inning. And then was taken out after the Blackman RBI. There's a strike, good pitch. One ball, two strikes on Tulowitzki. That's what we're talking about three home runs and. That batting average is unbelievable. 434 against lefties. Cox trying to make a big pitch here. Tulowitzki bangs one through, a base hit. This will bring in two more. Troy Tulowitzki with a two RBI single, and the beat goes on here in Colorado. 10 to 3. And those runs will belong to Matt Garza. Well, that's 10 runs on Matt Garza, three of them unearned. A high breaking pitch on a 1 2 count from Neil Kotz. And Tulowitzki continues to own left handed pitching. Still just one out here is Brandon Barnes. So the final line on Garza. Five and a third, 13 hits, 10 runs, seven earned. Will remain winless in his career at Coors Field. This is just his third start. Cots falling behind 3 and 0. Cots has come on. He's given up a walk and a two RBI single. Troy Tulowitzki now batting 439 in his career with one out and the bases loaded. Has a four pitch walk. And that might just do it for Neil Cots. Yeah. Great counts on his way out. Saw Knable getting loose. And a double switch coming. So Hector Gomez will come in to play defense, going into play second. It's going to move Perez over to third base. And Council will make a pitching change. Corey Knable is coming in to face Nolan Arenado. We'll take a timeout. Colorado. With a big lead now at 10 to 3.
game, and the flare has been the theme today for the Colorado Rockies. Look at all of these little dunkers that have fallen in. They've made them count. Little duck snorts, according to Ken Harrelson. <laughs> the Hawk. Broken bats off the end, and there have been some awfully hard hit baseballs, but for the most part, of the 13 hits allowed by Matt Garza, not too many of them hit all that hard, but it really doesn't matter. A hit is a hit. Rockies have batted around here in the sixth inning. They've had two three run innings. They have been able to put four on the board in this one. The defensive changes here. Gomez, Hector Gomez is in at second. That moves Perez over to third, and the new pitcher is Corey Knable. Make good numbers for Corey. 15th appearance and a 3.00 earned run average. Knable pitched on Friday here in Colorado through a scoreless inning. Arenado licking his chops here with the bases loaded. He's already homered in this game. He has two hits. Shot foul. Arenado turns it around, but out ahead of it, and it's 0 and 2 on him. That fastball in with something on it. Arenado able to get the bat with the bat on it. After Knable started him with a curveball. One two pitch and he just got a piece He fouled it away. Stays at one and two right off the end of the bat. Yeah, good curveball, able to just to hang in there because it was up in his own. Speaking of Hawk Harrelson, I'm glad you brought him up. You, you made me smile there. Mm -hmm. But uh, the White Sox had a walk off homer today, beating Texas. Gordon Beckham hit a walk off home run. I can almost hear Hawk call that right now. Go ahead. You can put it on the board. Yes. <laughs> He's a beauty. He is a beauty. He's yep. a good man, too. Yeah, he is. I love yep. going into Chicago and loves baseball. Chatting with Hawk Harrelson. They were here at, uh, well, not here, but at Miller Park this year. He and Steve Stone. On the ground to third, Perez goes to the bag across the diamond and a double play. And the inning is over. That was well timed. The Brewers needed that. Colorado still scores four and they lead 10 to three.
defense today. The Brewers have struggled, but the Rockies have not. Columbia St. Mary's worth another look. LeMay has made two fine plays. The pitcher, Russin, had a good game defensively on the mound. Showing the quick reactions. Took that one right off the hip on Ryan Braun. Look how he finishes this play. Yeah, between LeMayhew and Arenado and Russin, it has been a tightly played defensive day for the Rockies. And despite the score, hanging out with your kiddos at Coors Field, following the Brewers on the road. Nothing better than that. No, we got a little guy got to drink some water, man. It's hot out there. The Flintstones, the Rock Pile. We got the, uh, the, the dinosaur theme here with the Colorado Rockies. Yeah. Here's Boone Logan <laughs> out of the bullpen. He'll take over in the seventh inning. Yeah, one of two left-handers down in that Rockies pen. More strikeouts and innings pitched. 29th appearance, an 0 2 record, last pitched on the 18th against Houston. Yeah, they actually found a dinosaur skeleton when they were digging out this ballpark. Yeah, out there in center field, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Adam Lynn, a swing and a miss. So they, uh, yeah, they were able to preserve some of those great artifacts, and they adopted that dinosaur theme, even with their mascot, who is a dinosaur, because it's hard to have just like a walking mountain. <laughs> Not very mobile. Triceratops, isn't it? Yeah. And that would. Uh, that's what it is. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. it's a good one, Rock. Got a piece of the umpire, Jim Wolf, older brother of Randy Wolf. He's left handed like his brother. That one had to sting a little light, right off his forearm. Leg then forearm. Yeah, had it placed right above his knee, and that one got him. Slider that got away. Hundley couldn't catch it. And went off his glove. And hit the home plate umpire probably in a couple of places. Got him on the hand wrist. I think this is, uh, you know, if they do need to make an umpire change. He's all right. Uh, he's good. I thought for a moment Adrian Johnson was going back to put on his gear. Uh, we're glad Jim Wolf's able to hang in there. He's tough. He's a hockey player. So is Randy. Not a hockey player, but tough. Jim saying to Nick Hundley, hey, uh, next time, go ahead and catch that. I'd appreciate that. So the count is two and one to Adam Lynn. Colorado starter Chris Russin went six innings, seven hits, three runs. Is in line for the win. There's ball four. Lynn draws the walk. Logan, the former Yankee. He's had him in some high leverage late entering relief. Had a bad year last year, did Logan. Had an ERA at 6-8. A little bit better this year, but he hasn't been the pitcher that he was with the Yankees. And it was a year 2012 when he he led all of baseball in games pitch, 80 games. And it was seven and two. Spent time with the White Sox, Atlanta Braves before the Yankees. Second year with Colorado. Now he's in the second of a three-year deal. 
But he threw a lot of innings with the Yankees, a lot of appearances. Perez is swinging a miss out in front of a breaking ball. Pretty much a guy that's a left handed specialist. I mean, those 80 appearances with the Yankees, 55 in the third innings. You're going to pitch that much, you're not going to have too many full innings. It's a lot of work. Well, he went right back to it, and Hernan Perez strikes out. Not a bad thought. It worked once, and it works twice. Hey, see the, see the stars of today and the stars of tomorrow with the T Rats and crew. Turning two packets for just 15 bucks, you'll get a ticket to the Sunday, August 30th Brewers game at Miller Park, and a ticket valid for select Timber Rattler games. For details, visit Brewers.com slash T Rats. Willie Peralta was a T Rat. I just had a uh, T Rat game at Miller Park mm -hmm. this week. Yeah, Friday, wasn't it? Yeah. Or maybe Thursday. One of those days. What day is it today? Sunday. Sunday. Happy Father's Day, Ron. It was Friday. Thank you. Friday. You too. Any big plans for uh, Father's oh. Day when you get home oh, about 11 o'clock? Right. A ton. <laughs> but, yep. <laughs> Maddie will be up, won't she? Oh, yeah. She, oh, yeah. She's, she's moving into the... The teenage years, you know, 12 hours on, 12 hours of sleep. Just love being around parents. <laughs> She'll be up, though. She sent me a nice little Father's Day text. Thank heaven for little girls. Yeah, no kidding. You know, it's real popular these days on holidays, those, uh, those Internet cards that yeah. you can send open up the, they have music Did you get any of those no but that'd be a good thought for me next time that, that seems like more my alley than actually going somewhere to buy a card and then writing in it that's only reserved for my mom and my wife writing in cards uh -huh. writing in cards not Paco no no not nah, not Paco no way can't do that And he's got a stack of mail about 20 deep, you know. He's a, like a once a week read the mail guy. Right. Peterson, a swing and a miss. Now, what is the uh, protocol? I mean, what is the appropriate uh, length of time to keep a card once you get it? What mm -hmm. do you think? I think like maybe 30 seconds is fine. <laughs> huh? I mean, once it's read and shared. Stick them up on the counter and take a look at it. You walk by maybe for what, three, four days? Christmas cards a little bit longer, but mm -hmm. you know, Father's Day, birthdays, week max. I didn't know we were talking days here. I, you know. Poor Paco doesn't even have a card to stick up. <laughs> <laughs> He's got no choice. Now, do you let the card do all your talking, or do you actually write so oh, I write stuff in some it. Some content right, in it. Right. I, I write some content. Peterson turns it around. A base hit. And on his way to third base goes Adam Lynn. Shane Peterson. How about that at bat? Those are the kind of at bats. You know, you're you're in a game. It's 10 to 3. Dragging a little bit. And he's up there grinding away to get to hit off yeah. of a left-hander with two strikes. Never wasted bats. 300 hitters never wasted bats. He's hanging right in there. Got a fastball middle in and dumped it into center field on the seventh pitch of that at bat. A little bit up and Peterson able to dump it into center. Walt Weiss is going to make a pitching change here with a seven run lead. He's playing the matchups here in the seventh. And with Hector Gomez coming up. We will take a timeout, set up the new pitcher when we continue. The Brewers trail 10 3. They got a couple of men on here.
Brewers trying to chip away at this seven run deficit as we play in the seventh inning. And the new pitcher rock is going to be Justin Miller and he has hardly worked this year. This is only his third game of the season. He's been pretty good. He got uh, called up made his Rockies debut on Wednesday after being called up from Triple A. Yeah, before the game pretty good numbers down in the minor leagues. One in three with a 230 earned run average. 27 innings down in the minor leagues with 30 punch outs. Pretty good. A split time between New Britain of the Eastern League double A and Albuquerque of the Pacific Coast League. So Scooter Jeanette's going to hit. He'll hit for Hector Gomez. First and third with one out. Jeanette getting an at bat in this seventh inning and will remain in the game at second base, most likely. Scooter hitless in this series. Got a start yesterday, but the Rockies with two left handed starters. He has been on the bench twice. Still trying to find that consistency at the plate. Pretty good homestand after he got called up. Justin Miller with an 0 2 count on Jeanette. And he got him. Jeanette strikes out. Second K of the inning. First strikeout for Miller. And two gone with runners at first and third. Well, that brings us to today's time in the game winner. It's Katz's Pub in St. Francis. If they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours, they get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game this year. So for courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. Top of the order Gene Segura now. Who is one for three today. Miller has been released twice. Got released by the Rangers first. He was actually drafted by the Rockies. As a high school player he didn't sign and went to Fresno State. Drafted again by Texas ultimately released. Been on a DL a lot in his career. Had eight big league games. Those came in with the Tigers last year before getting called up on Wednesday. Now all out of the bullpen for Detroit last season. So at 28 years of age, he's getting a chance, a second chance in the big leagues with Colorado. First and third for Segura. One and one. Popped him up. Middle of the infield. Tulowitzki is there. And that will retire the side. Stretch time here in Denver on a Father's Day. All Colorado so far. After a 20 year career. After attending UCLA, he joined the Navy where he flew multiple fighter aircraft and was selected to attend the prestigious U.S. Navy Fighter Weapons School, better known as Top Gun. During his 20 year naval career, Commander Terry amassed many awards, among them three Combat Strike Flight Air Medals and two Defense Meritus Service Medals. Commander Terry is joined today by his wife, Marnie, and their two daughters, Carter and Kennedy. Fans, please give a warm hero's welcome to Commander David Terry and all of our nation's brave service men and women and their families. We thank you for your service and sacrifice. Fans. 
Please rise as we honor our great country by the performance of God Bless America. Performing God Bless America today, representing the Colorado National Guard's 101st Army Band, is Sergeant Brian Person. Please welcome Sergeant Person and join him by singing along to God Bless America. from Coors Field in Denver Kalahari Resort features an exciting mix of rides slides and adventures for the whole family from the amazing water park to the indoor theme park Kalahari offers an array of attractions for children of all ages plus with amenities such as spa Kalahari and salon exceptional dining options and championship golf Kalahari goes beyond your expectations first ball swinging Ben Paulson fouls it away Scooter Jeanette stays in the game to play second base. Brewers had a chance with two on to cut into this deficit a little bit. Could not, and they trail it 10-3 as we play in the bottom of the seventh. And quickly 0-2 on Paulson. Knable came on, did a nice job to get out of a mess in the sixth inning. Four runs it already scored. And the Rockies had the bases loaded with one out. He got a double play ball from Nolan Arenado to end the inning. He just continues to impress, does Knable. And just continues to throw strikes. That's the one thing that has been pretty impressive about him. And the first uh, opportunity in the big leagues and just not afraid to throw the ball over the plate. Yeah, why would you, right? Lynn backhands it. Knable on the run. And out number one as Paulson is retired. Turn on the upper 90s. Those strikes. He's got a good curveball to go with it.
Nick Hundley now. He has three hits today. He scored three runs. Driven in a run. The six, seven, and eight hitters of this Colorado lineup has scored seven runs in this game. Seven of the ten coming from the bottom of the order. And five hits in that group. It was the bottom of the order that did damage for the Brewers in their win on Friday. Just the opposite here this afternoon. Milwaukee won the opener 9 to 5. Taylor Youngman got the win. And then yesterday, Colorado beat Loesch and the Brewers 5 to 1. Chad Bettis the winner. The rubber game today, and Colorado has a seven run lead in the home seventh. Two three run innings and a four run inning. Two birdies in a par. <laughs> Been keeping an eye on the U.S. Open Rock out of Chambers Bay. I have not. They got a nice uh, they're set up for a nice little finish. That's over on Fox, by the way. First uh, jaunt into golf coverage for the mothership. And yeah, maybe I should have said I have been watching it since it's on Fox. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching it, B.A. Sure, yeah. It's been very entertaining. Rock, you've been watching any of the U.S. Open? Yeah. There's a line drive left center. Nick Hundley has himself a four-hit game. That's going to go to the wall. Hundley will settle for a double. Two doubles, two singles, four for four. A season high for hits in a game for Nick Hundley. Every one of them into center field. He hasn't pulled anything. He hasn't anything to write. Two singles, two doubles, all coming into center field. It's close, close into center field. A ringing double with one out. Turned around that fastball from Knable that time. 96, able to turn it around and doubled off the wall. A strike to Enoa. Enoa getting to start in left field today. It's his first start of the series. He's responded two for three. He scored three runs. Slaps that one foul. And he was at the play when the Brewers tried to turn that double play. Remember Hundley coming in hard at second base. The play would have been at first. Did not get anybody. That was the beginning of the three run inning in the third. For Colorado all three runs unearned. And things have gone downhill from there. Look out. Another hot one in the seats. She's got it here. Put this away. Hope everybody's all right down there. Those line drives into the box seats can get real scary. Ground ball to Jeanette. And the second out. That will advance Hundley. Two men are out though. Hey, the Brewers return home on Tuesday after an off day tomorrow to begin the three game series with the Mets. And on Tuesday night, first 10,000 fans through the gates at Miller Park will get a free Summerfest weekday admission ticket. For tickets to the Brewers game, visit Brewers.com today. It's coming up, isn't it? Mm hmm. It's happening. Summer, Imminent. Summerfest when it starts Wednesday, doesn't it? Close? I shouldn't ask that, should I? I know it. I know it's this week.
Looking forward to Summerfest. Yeah. We've got the Rolling Stones coming on the 23rd in two days. So it's got to start Tuesday, maybe. If my math is correct. Yeah, okay. Justin Miller getting an at bat in this inning. His first career plate appearance. The Colorado pitcher. With a 10 3 lead, Walt Weiss says, why not? And Knabel in a 2 2 count with him. Runner at third, seventh inning. Knable trying to put up another zero. And Miller fouls it away. Did we confirm Tuesday? Tuesday, the Rolling Stones. It is Tuesday, yeah. Yes, Rolling Stones will kick it off. You know who's opening up for the Rolling Stones? Who's that? Buddy Guy. Wow. Like, Buddy Guy doesn't open up for anybody except the Rolling Stones, blues guitarist. Right. Down he goes, and the inning is over. Knabel, impressive. In a game like this, Knabel comes out firing bullets. Puts up a couple of zeros in an inning and two-thirds. Oh, and Brian Mikulajic doing whatever he does in the truck. Brian Anderson with Bill Schroeder. It's 10-3 Colorado. Not a whole lot of fun for the Brew Crew today. Our carsoup.com trivia, in case you're hanging in there for that one. Who are the three players in Brewers history to save 40 games in a season? And uh, the answer, John Axford. He is uh, tied for the all-time lead with 46. Actually tied for the league lead that year. Francisco Cordero with 44, and then K Rod had 44 last year. So there you go, the top three in Brewers franchise history that are on our carsoup.com trivia. Gerardo Parra at the plate for the Brewers. We play in the eighth inning of a 10 3 game. Justin Miller continues. got to uh, do a little a little cleanup on aisle five with Summerfest. We don't want to lead people the wrong way. Right. So the Rolling Stones are on uh, on the 23rd. So Summerfest officially kicks off the 24th. Stones will be at the Marcus Amphitheater day before the, the night before. That's the kickoff right. 
So I think it this still officially begins. Well, yeah, I mean, on the 23rd. But if you, you know, I'm talking about the general Summerfest grounds. That's splitting hairs, though. I mean, well, you were right. I just want to get it right. And you did. Being too hard on yourself. No. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, it's hard to get free tickets if you if you don't get it right. Well, the Brewers will be playing most days. Para wraps one in the right center, a base hit. That's going to go all the way to the fence. Herrera Para thinking about three. Ah, he'll settle for a double. So Para with his second hit. He's two for four. Double number 16 to go along with his four homers. And that'll bring up Ryan Braun. He's in our shining moment of the game, brought to you by Marshfield Clinic. A high drive off the wall in right on a play that Carlos Gonzalez was actually injured on. And Braun thinking about going all the way around. Ed Cedar held him up. Braun with a triple. He would score, making it a 3 to 2 ball game at that point in the top of the fourth. Brewers actually scored first in this game back in the second inning. Had a 1 to nothing lead. On an RBI from Hernan Perez. And Braun hammers one into the gap. All the way to the wall, this one goes. Gerardo Parra comes in to score, and it's an RBI double for Ryan Braun. The Brewers are banging away here in this eighth inning. Back-to-back -back doubles makes it 10-4. to four. And both of them hit very hard. Barreled them up, both fastballs. Gerardo Parra in the right center, Braun in the left center. See that fastball out over the plate, and that's uh, that's in Ryan Braun's wheelhouse right there. Tried to get it inside, left it out over the plate, and Braun able to take advantage of it. And here is Lucroy. Jonathan with two hits in the series. He had a double and an RBI in the sixth. One for three today with a couple of line drive outs. Got a chance to pick up an RBI. Popped him up. Back in the grass, LeMahieu turning. Tough play now, and he makes a catch. Hey, where was Barnes on that? He just gave up on it and made it a very difficult play for LeMahieu. That's an easy play for the right fielder. Coming in for Carlos Gonzalez. And you see LeMay, you having a tough time with it. Maybe battling the wind, the sun. Able to haul it in, though. Yeah, it's almost as if, as if he positioned his body so he didn't have to look back into the sun. Almost got over his head. So a pinch hitter here with one away. Jason Rogers coming off the bench. Ramirez was removed from the game on the double switch earlier. Rogers hits in his spot. And Maldonado and uh, Carlos Gomez remain on the Brewers bench. Not sure if Carlos is available, although he was running pretty well before today's game. Well, he was flying around the bases yeah, he today. Was. During batting practice, they were. Uh, Pushing him to see how far that injured groin and hip could go. And it doesn't look like he is in a position to play today. I think uh, the idea is to have him see how he responds after today's efforts and then a day off tomorrow for the team, and then we'd see him probably on Tuesday if he's good to go. Otherwise, they can backdate his disabled list time. From his last game played, which was Wednesday night in Kansas City. Rogers pops it foul. It's going to head into the seats. And it'll be a ball and two strikes on Jason Rogers. Yeah, Carlos was the designated hitter in Kansas City. Had a pretty good night at the plate, too. Yeah, two hits. Had a double. 
But it was on that double that Craig Council basically decided or asked the question of Gomez, can you play in the outfield right now? Carlos said, I don't think so. And uh, that's the reason that he's been shut down ever since. Especially the two outfields that the Brewers have been playing at on this road trip, Kansas City and Colorado. A lot of room to cover in both of them. Doug Melvin once told me there is more surface space in Kansas City's outfield than this one. Which is amazing. It's hard to believe. But it's true. Yeah. It's true. It's true. That's a lot of territory out there. 2-2 Two -two pitch and Rogers in the air. Right field. Brandon Barnes will make the catch. And Braun's going to tag. He'll go to third. Second out in the inning. And here comes Adam Lynn. We'll put him on the Powerball home run leaderboard today. Lynn hit a home run yesterday. And it's always good to get a smiling face on the Powerball leaderboard. Lynn with 10, hit number 10 yesterday. Bronze the club leader. He is seventh in the league to start play today. Now it looks like we have another pitching change. In a 10-4 game in the eighth inning, Walt Weiss is planted by the book. We'll take a break. Two outs in the eighth. Weiss is going to his bullpen. We'll be right back. Father's Day here in Denver, Colorado, and uh, some of the great images of these Brewers players with their children. Uh, there's a good one. They're all good. Everybody's smiling. That's the only way Adam Lynn smiles. He hits a long home run or he's with his kids. I don't blame him. Yeah, those are great shots. We appreciate all the Brewers players sending in their photographs with their kids. Happy Father's Day to you all. We sit here with two outs in Denver. Eighth inning, and Christian Friedrich is in to pitch with Lynn coming up. And Friedrich last pitched on the 17th against Houston. Pitched. He was in there for two innings, gave up a couple of hits on, or I should say, a couple of runs on three hits. And no walks, a couple of strikeouts, and in there for Adam Lind. On the ground, LeMayhew off the ground makes the play. Man, he's something. Doesn't matter the score, the time, what position they are in the standings. That's a gold glover right there.
All right, Craig and Augie, thanks. Looking forward to that. That will put the ribbon on our road trip here through Kansas City and Denver. The Brewers have just one win on this road trip. Jonathan Broxton gets the ball here at Coors Field. He'll have the top of the order. Charlie Blackman leads off. What a day he's had at the plate. Blackman with two hits. He's driven in four. He hit a home run yesterday, drove in three runs. Broxton falling behind 3 0. Yeah, Jonathan can use a good outing. Last pitched on Friday against these Rockies, gave up a run in an inning of work in that Brewers victory. Needs to be more consistent with his slider. Well, good day to work on it today. Yeah. Down six runs. Now the Brewers will take tomorrow off. Scheduled team off day after 17 consecutive without an off day. That's a long stretch. Yes, it is. Maximum is 20. And Blackman draws the walk. So Charlie Blackman on for the third time. A base runner here in the eighth. After the off day, the Mets will be in Milwaukee at Miller Park. Miller Light, what's on tap? Jonathan Nice against Mike Fires on Tuesday. And then Jimmy Nelson will match up against Bartolo Colon. Jacob DeGrom, last year's Rookie of the Year in the National League. He'll have the ball against Taylor Youngman Thursday. Two night games. Thursday's a day game. Our Miller Light, what's on tap? Ground ball to second should be two. And it is. Four six three double play to wipe out the lead walk. Jeanette Segura Lynn. Yeah, second double play turned by the Brewers today, and only the second double play on this in this series. Did not turn the double play in the first two games. And the second double play of the last three innings. Broxton to face a pinch hitter here, Daniel Descalso. So Walt Weiss gets Friedrich to retire Adam Lind, and now Descalso hitting. Pinch hitting in the Troy Tulowitzki spot. Tulowitzki finished two for four. Three runs batted in today. Tulowitzki drove in two with a single in the sixth inning. Right now in line for the win is Chris Russon. Matt Garza on the hook for the loss. Brewers have used Cots, Knable, and now Broxton in this game. Shatters is bad. Adam Lind will glove it. Broxton is there for him, and that will retire the side. So he works around a leadoff walk. Good inning for Broxton, and we go to the ninth at Coors Field.
Football on Fox Sports Wisconsin, presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Book your stay now. 10 to 4 is the score as we go to the ninth. Last call for the Brewers here. They're down six. ATT Uberse Rewind. This has been a defensive clinic by the second baseman, DJ LeMayhew. He has turned this game around with his glove. Uh, not just that, but his bat as well. I mean, this is a bona fide all star right here. They're really pushing for LeMayhew to make the all star team a gold glover. Big kid for a second baseman. 6'4, and he's made some tremendous plays throughout this three game series. You know, it used to be you talk about the great duo in Colorado. You were talking about Troy Tulowitzki and Carlos Gonzalez. But now you're talking about LeMahieu and Arenado. These two up-and-comers who not only play great D, gold glove caliber D, but they also hit. That's why it's so surprising that the Rockies are where they are in the standings. They've got young talent. They've got veteran talent, guys that have been there. They've been to the postseason, like Cargo and Tulo. Pitching has been a problem, and it's always going to be the case here right. with the Rockies. They've got a new pitching coach, and Steve Foster, he's very good. It's going to be difficult to get good pitchers to come in here and want to pitch. As free agents, right? right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, free agents, uh, it's not the first place you think of when you think, where do I want to go pitch? Colorado probably the last. There's a base hit by Hernan Perez. He's two for four today. Keeps hitting. Drove in a run back in the second. Always been the case with the uh, the Rockies in free agency. Remember the deal they signed with Mike Hampton right. back in the day? And that, that one just... It never got off the ground, and he struggled mightily here. Not a half a season. And he would be the kind of a guy you would think would be successful yeah. here. I mean, a sinker baller, left-hander, you know, tailing the ball away from right-handed hitters. It's one the case. And he could hit. Yeah, I don't know if there's a formula. They've tried everything here. There was at one point two years ago that the Rockies were using the piggyback system. Remember with their starters? Mm -hmm. And yeah. they'd have a reliever who would pitch on that day only. So the starter would go four, three or four, maybe five, and then pitch the reliever counts, would right? come in in three. And it's all trying to stay fresh and have live arms. They've tried the sinker ball pitchers. They've gone to power pitchers. I mean, Ubaldo Jimenez had as much success here as anyone. But there aren't many of those guys around, especially when he was, you know, in, in his prime, when he was heated up throwing 98, 99 miles an hour. That kind of guy is going to succeed anywhere. Right. Hasn't been the same since. <laughs> but, you know, they've been to a World Series. They've had a number of playoff appearances in their franchise history. As Peterson strikes out for the first out of the inning. And he'll finish two for four. Here's Scooter Jeanette. This is the last meeting with the Rockies this year. The Brewers are, barring a comeback, going to drop five out of six to Colorado. And this is going to be a one and four road trip. I think it's going to be a very well-timed off day for the crew tomorrow. They need it in more ways than one. Yeah, hard to know where the organization is headed. They certainly have a lot of calls and a lot of inquiries on personnel. Contending teams have scouts in the stands. Looking at all the pieces. Well, this has a chance to be two to end the game. And it does. The Colorado Rockies win. They take two out of three from the Brewers, winning the last two. Chris Russon defeats Matt Garza today. And the Rockies win the finale by a final of 10 to 4.
And although no home runs were hit in this game, over $2 million have been raised so far during the home run challenge. Make your pledge by going online to homerunchallenge.org. No home runs by the Brewers in this game. So that'll do it for us. Off day tomorrow. We'll be back at you on Tuesday against the New York Mets. Brewers Live coming your way next. Let's check in with Craig and Augie at Wisconsin Dells. Take it away, Craig.